Daryl's a really good old friend of ours, and it's probably best to let him introduce himself. <laughs> besides, <laughs> besides being a good old friend of ours, I think we, that's that's the important part for us. But he's done so much, and uh, uh, since we've known him, let's let's talk about how long we've known Daryl first. Yeah, like, th- yeah. This is oh, for oh, everyone who doesn't I'll, know, I'll give you an idea of how. Y'all, I mean, y'all weren't even signed yet. Y'all were the first punk band, uh, first punk show I ever went to. Wow, yeah, that's cool. It was, it was, was April of 1990. Oh, my God. My Nissan got <laughs> repossessed that day. <laughs> oh, man. And I was upset. So, or, or somewhere, no, 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 two days before. So me, um, my boy, uh, Tori Lloyd, Tori, yeah. um, he said that y'all were playing over at um. There was a show, rather. There was a show over at the Student Center on. I think it was Bush. I think. Okay. Was Bush. Mm-hmm. Yep. And the lineup was Frozen Grin, Y'all, <laughs> Loose, and Shades Apart. Oh, Frozen. nice! That's All a right. cool show, man. All that right. is a good one. Shades Apart this were both is- totally sick. Good memory. And this is why y'all were living in Brookline uh, over over in Somerset. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah, second house. Second oh, house. Yeah. yeah. That's why I remember like uh like you guys coming over, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, that, that was house. a weird fit, that house. That was a weird little era that I always forget that we had. It was like after we basically <laughs> you know moved like, destroyed and moved out of the first house, and then we it was like a weird interim period before the 174 days began. Well, we went like it was like full extreme from the the middle of the shit to like total suburbia like right right outside of New Brunswick. Mm-hmm. It That's was a weird, no, no. that was the weird fit. That was that was the part that was a weird fit. We didn't belong there with our noise. We tried to make a jam room in that basement. I remember we hung a mattress. There was a a basement door, and we we like somehow hung a mattress in front of the door. Like that was going to stop yeah, all right. the sound. We tried to have our parties and do our whole thing. <laughs> and y'all still had shows. You still yeah. had shows in the yeah basement? we. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, it wasn't like, it wasn't like, and, and the cops didn't even come. I mean, at least as far as I know, the cops never showed up. Let's just say the neighbors didn't like us very much. Yeah. <laughs> their kids neither, neither did that landlord, not for nothing. <laughs> their kids didn't. liked them. Like yeah, they did. They we did. had a couple good parties there. The landlord hated us. Like, when we left, we left a house full of uh, fleas, remember? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I remember he complained. He like walked into the house and got all like they all. He's like they all jumped on my legs. Yeah, started eating me. I was well, like, oh. fuck him. Let's leave the fleas with him. Oh, gross. <clears throat> let me see. I saw a show there. I saw a show. Y'all had. Let me see. Cowabung hole. <laughs> Whoa. That, that was uh, that. Was, this was the, this was the show I remember. Cowabung uh-huh. hole. Um. That was a. Two two girls named that called themselves Prunella. Oh yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah, I know Pete V. Jack Terracloth is yep. um, was playing. It wasn't Sticks and Stones. I mean, it, it, they was trying to do something. Mm. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. And separate piece. Separate, separate piece. piece yeah. yeah. Separate piece. Finished off the set, and just passed out right there. That was the end of the show. They all just passed out and you woke them up the next morning. <laughs> uh, yeah. Man. Cool. Yeah, that's that's cool. You got Dower, a steel trap memory, man. Daryl remembers everything better than us, so that's that's mm-hmm. good. Well, was, no, that's separate, of, <laughs> was in separate piece? Was that? that people I don't was know. That I, Little that Dave. The, Little Dave was in separate Little piece, Dave. I think. And, oh, yeah. That's right. I don't even remember the bit. I don't remember. I don't remember. Um, I only saw a separate piece that one time. Or like Garrett or something. Some yeah. Garrett, maybe, or something. That well, band Cowboy Bungho, I loved, and I wish that they had done something with themselves. But, you know, <laughs> They're buddies I mean, from high school. Could, that yeah. was high school, buds. <laughs> they, so, they were nice. That guitarist was killing me, man. I was mm. like, ah. Maybe for, for context, too, we can explain, Daryl, like what you were doing back then. You had your, oh, your well, TV show, yeah. Well, the, I didn't even start it. That, that was really what was starting to inspire me because what happened right. was – and um, what happened was I was doing my politics. I was doing yeah. my politics, but I didn't know exactly where I was going with that. Um, I was still trying to figure out, because I was just getting out of the Air Force maybe, this is 90. I got okay. kicked out of the Air Force in March of eight, of um, 89. Okay. So I was trying to figure out where I was going um, 
try, um, trying to get involved in some sort of music scene and all that. And the glam rock scene was the only thing that was there. I don't fit in no damn glam rock scene. <laughs> and right. y'all, and, and then I started going, and then, you know, Tori started bringing me to the shows and stuff oh, like yeah, that. Yeah, I was like, Tori. okay. Yeah. I was like, okay, I mean, this is where I belong. I mean, because, you know, the glam rock scene, That's everybody awesome. has their airs and they're all pretentious as hell. Yeah. Um, you can't touch them because they're rock stars now. <laughs> um, and all of a sudden, I'm, I'm running into a whole bunch of people who are just like chilling out there. It's no big deal. They're musicians too, and you don't even think about them being musicians. I said, okay, I'm in my element. This is where I want to be. That's awesome. So, That's, so, That's really cool. And, and y'all were and y'all were great too back then too because what um because y'all built up it wasn't a dying scene in New Brunswick it was an older scene until y'all came along yep because it was like the um like court tavern everybody basically um, at the court tavern was reminiscing about how they knew um, the Smithereens you know right that mm-hmm. was like New Brunswick claim to fame yeah. 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 <laughs> Somewhere along the when it's somewhere along the line, they started reminiscing about how they knew y'all. When they got to when they got to reminiscing about how they knew Inspector Seven, I was like, okay, I'm getting old. <laughs> generations, the generations, yeah. man. Right now, everybody reminisces about the Court Tavern period. Yeah, totally. True. True. Well, that's awesome. The details. This is great, Daryl. Yep. This is great. Yeah, then you started to like you started like your video show, right? Yeah, right. I, oh yeah, yeah. See, we could talk all day long, but yeah, we got I did I started doing I moved up to Newark for a little bit and I started hooking up with my um with my um cousin and he mm-hmm. suggested something about public access and started do do your own television shows. So yeah. I said, Okay, let me see if I can get me um a video camera and get this party on the road. And yeah. I got me a little eight millimeter video camera. No, no, the first thing I ever shot. <laughs> Y'all again. Oh, cool. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> November 11th, 1990, the Unity Bash at Rucker Student Center. Oh, Fugazi. No, Fugazi. No, Fugazi didn't do this. Oh. Okay. Maybe they were supposed to, but. <clears throat> no, that was a <clears throat> benefit for homeless children. This. Yeah. yeah. Lunatics. Wow. Lunatics. That's right. Okay. Yeah. 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 So <sighs> that lineup was um, Spy Gods. By God, and it yeah. was um oh good grief was it not y'all it wasn't y'all yet it was Spy God Headstrong y'all loose come on come on come on come on come on there was somebody else <laughs> sticks and stones sticks and stones oh yeah yeah it had to be it had to be it had to be, it had to be. Oh, it had to be. That's awesome that's awesome that's man and that I still like... got oh oh shit bad karma. Bad, bad karma bad karma that's all that's all of the New Brunswick like funk scene that pretty was, much all fire. They were the coolest band in New Brunswick back home. Yeah, that was the New Brunswick sampler platter. That <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that really was. Like us and the <clears throat> Lunachicks. Like the all five New Brunswick bands and then the Lunachicks. I still what got and I still got that video. I still What's, got that video. Oh, I would I'd love, love to see, see that, that, man. Yeah. 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 But cr- it's cringeworthy, I'm sure. But <laughs> if you turn oh, the sound man. down, maybe it'd be pretty fun. I to bet watch. it's like it's like shirts off, you know? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Rank's first stage dive. Wow. <laughs> well, we got a lot of firsts. You know why, yeah, you know why that was? It's be probably because there was enough people in the front to catch me. There so was the I, first time. That. There was the enough time. people. There wasn't enough people before that to catch <laughs> or, me. Or after. Or after for like another yeah. three years or, yeah. or so. I mean, oh, I want to say because there was another show before that when y'all played with Lucy Brown, but I think it was just um, Brian and Pete that jumped into the crowd. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Guitars on. <laughs> guitars on. Let's play our guitars. <laughs> no, no, no. You had you took the guitars off. That so would have been funny. embarrassing. That's awesome. That would have hurt. That, that we probably oh, never see, we probably never sounded so good as when we took our guitars <laughs> off. <laughs> so I so I shot that show, and then the next show I think I shot a y'all was uh, I started I started shooting. Oh yeah, that's right. Because at the time I didn't have a a, a steady video camera yet. So the next show I have, and I also have this, and this also appeared in the fifteen years video too. DVD. Oh yeah. The, um, Maxwell show. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God. May thirty first, nineteen ninety nine. Damn, <laughs> dude. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, Daryl. He's blowing my mind with his. Well, I remember the thing. They're, so they're, on, the, they're on the side of it. <laughs> Thank wow. God, someone remembers anything, yeah. man. Jesus. Give me. What, I, got video, 
I got Darryl, video for days. Daryl is actually wow. documenting things. Yeah. yeah, I mean, see, that was the whole thing about, see, see, see the, yeah. one of the things that I liked about that era, man, I mean, it was like, I started to, everybody was trying to do something, you know, yep. everybody yep. was doing their zines, everybody was doing their bands, everybody was doing their labels, Sam Schiffman actually hit me up um, for um, some, some of the stuff <laughs> I got around here, wow. and he did Complex Records, Yep. I decided, why can't we have a TV show? That's yeah. right. That's right. Well, yeah. Channel X came into being, yeah. and um, and that lasted for about three years. I, my claim to fame, once again, y'all, I'm the first person to put y'all on TV. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Daryl. Yeah, Daryl. And the That's rest great. Is <laughs> and that and that was in '93. Okay. Wow. Great. Now we, yeah, now we know. Now we know. The first. My niece was born then. I gotta, I gotta see some of all that Channel X yeah. footage too, man. I want to see some of that footage too, man. That'd be a great. Oh, that, yeah, that I got. Only great, problem with session. the eight. Only problem is with the eight millimeter footage, um, that I that I shot everything on eight millimeter video. Those tapes are breaking now because they're old. They're thirty years old. Oh now. yeah, wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and um, and so I'm not, I'm not dubbing them. I'm not digitizing them because the moment I put them in one of my um. One of my machines, it breaks, and it's like, man, I, I can't lose these tapes. Wow. Yeah. Oh, I mean, shit. one of the best videos I have right now it, it actually is on YouTube. It's the vis it's a vision show from the Melody about 20 years ago. Whoa. And, oh, and, and, this, and, it was, and the acoustics were perfect. Little video camcorder. I feel like and, I've seen that. Have I seen? I think I've seen that one. Yeah. Everybody's in this room, yeah. which means the sound is bouncing off of everybody. And it's just like, I have, st oh, it was beautiful. It's beautiful to listen. I listen to it in my car, the music. It sounds <laughs> that's so awesome. Cool. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> that's cool. So, but yeah, the TV show lasted for about three years. Then I moved out to Cleveland, found out y'all got signed to Epitaph. <laughs> and then, mm. then I came home. Y'all was yeah. already out in the wind. Y'all was, right. was, was on your way. On the so, road. Um, so yeah. I did the life we lead. I did another TV show with Pedro, Pedro Serrano. Yeah. And uh, and that lasted for another three years before we passed it off to um, some crew in Boston. And then by that time, one people's project started, and I had to I had to move on and started focusing on that. And that just pulled me completely out of the scene. And I'm just like, hey, this is what I do now. It's great. Yeah, it's pretty. Tell great, us about actually. that. Yeah. Well, tell us. I tell tell us about. Basically, this is the mantra: no Nazis. But, All right, <laughs> it's a pretty good mantra. <laughs> well, pretty good. <laughs> but it is crazy because, like, I've always been an activist. I've always been political. Um, but um, and most importantly, I always chased after neo Nazis or fascists or whatever. And um, finally, the internet gave me an opportunity to um, to really expand my horizon, so to speak. There was a white supremacist rally, neo Nazi rally happening in um, Morristown. We all got together to try to um, try to deal with it. Um, we put up a website. And this was this is 20 years ago. It, yeah, um, we're yeah, having our 20th yeah. anniversary on the 4th of July. Wow! That's oh, awesome. cool. And um, and after the and after the rally, um, we said, why don't we just keep this going? Mm. And like I said, we've been doing it for 20 years, or at least I have, because a lot of people fell off. And um, basically, what we do is docs. We report yeah. it. We didn't yeah. call it Doxin when we started. Yeah. <clears throat> we just um we just went out there and um just let people know who's who, what's what, and why you should get rid of them. And we mm -hmm. ruined a lot of Nazi lives. <laughs> good. <laughs> Fighting it's a good so fight, awesome. dude. Yeah, and yeah. uh I think I think it's important to acknowledge like like Daryl, you've really been on, on the front lines essentially of, of what what this yeah. what this is and, and how intense that, that must be. I can't even imagine. And I think I want to, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll plug the documentary so people can really see the, uh, the, the, the doc on not on Netflix. Um, mm -hmm. um, but I mean, I'm just so, I'm so proud to know you, Daryl. Hey, yeah. It's so, you know what? Likewise. I was seeing the alt-right. It's called alt-right, the doc on Netflix. And it's I called just alt-right yeah. age of rage. Uh, Age of Rage, yeah. Yeah, that's the that's there the um, There it is, there it is. There it is. <laughs> I was like <laughs> I was just watching that with my wife and I'm like, I know this guy. I know yeah. this guy. I was just so excited watching. You that didn't know so this, wait a minute. So you didn't know I was in it. 
Yeah, I did. I did. But I, I had to show her the, the doc and be like, I know this guy. We know this guy for 20 years, 30 years. I'm like, I was so proud. But then yeah. I got to say, it was that, I, and I am so proud of that doc and you. But yeah. like, I finally got to see that movie Skin. And that took it to another level watching an actor <laughs> portray you, which is like, the I was like, Oh, he's wearing your same jacket and hat and glasses. I was like, oh, this man. is so weird. I just wish I had his shape. <laughs> I mean, it's a very, very handsome man he was. With the hat and the quilted jacket and the same glasses. I was like, this is amazing. It was, oh, man, talk about, talk about, uh, you know, I've always wanted to get at that level. Um, but once the politics started coming in, once I had to start doing that work, I, I had to focus on other things. The fact that it came around like that, um, it was just like, yes, thank you. Oh, good grief. <laughs> well, hold on a second. Just want to make yeah. sure that doesn't happen again. Yeah, I'll just uh, finish. I'll finish that up by saying, or I won't finish it up, but I just want to interject for anyone watching. Yeah. There's a movie called Skin, and it's on Amazon. And... You'll see just by the cover photo of it. It's oh, Amazon. It's, it's on Amazon Prime. It's on yes, Amazon it's on Prime. Amazon Prime. All right. And there's it's the bud with his face all tattooed, and then like the Daryl Lamont Jenkins character. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dude, I'm like, wow. That's if you like have, if you have Direct TV, you can also watch it because actually Direct TV owns the film, so okay. they have it on demand that way too. Cool. Um, it, it's basically the story. It was um. It was actually the story about a neo-Nazi named Brian Widener, who got out of the scene thanks to me, and uh, in the course of which he had he had some really nasty tattoos on his face, and he got them on his arms, and he had gotten them removed as he was getting out of the um getting out of the scene, and he wanted to make sure I was a part of this, and and um. They started talking to me and um, realized, yeah, you have to be a character in this. We <laughs> shot it in, um, awesome. we shot it in Kingston, New York, in like twenty seven. I think it was seventeen, eighteen, eighteen. Okay. We shot it in eighteen, and um, in February, and mm -hmm. it, it it was it, it was just a great experience. I mean, I I love meeting I love meeting Mike because I was the Luke Cage, I was the biggest Luke Cage fan at the time because he plays Luke Cage for those that don't know. Luke Cage oh, 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 yeah. oh, oh, yeah. I didn't even, yeah, I didn't right. even yeah. make that connection, dude. That was that the Luke so Cage cool. guy. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I mean, it, it's crazy because it was like I was running it's over the past couple of years I'm that's just cool. like running into people who are like famous who are fans of mine. And I'm like <laughs> This yeah. is supposed to happen. That's awesome. <laughs> That's so cool. So watching people, watching people audi audition to play me that I knew from other <laughs> stuff is just like I can't believe I just I didn't even realize it was the Luke Cage guy. I watched that entire series. He didn't look like him. He looked like halfway between Luke Cage and Daryl Lamont Jenkins. Like, oh man, I didn't, I didn't even recognize like, uh, him. That actor is amazing. Did, well, here's something else that's coming up. Um, they're actually going to do a. Um, uh, another they after they shot the movie they realized that they wanted to try to do something else with me so they're actually going to do um kind of like my life story uh -uh. i don't know if it's going to be a movie or a mini series or whatever but i'm talking with a few <laughs> folks dude. that's um, so cool man <laughs> the script writer the guy who we um having um write this is a dude named elgin james who was awesome in the antifa scene back in the day he was in a crew called friend stand united fuck shit up whatever you want to call it and his boy, this is talk, talk about the perfect storm here. I'm going to drop a name that you probably haven't heard in years. Hit one of his boys, because he writes for the Mayans. He, he's the script writer. He's, um, okay. He, he writes that for that. <clears throat> and, and one of his best friends is Loki. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Loki, Loki, I seen him appearing in that show with Mayans, and I'm like, yeah. I get it. That's so another I'm old head that, from our scene, man. Yeah, yeah. A lot of cool shit, too. Yeah. He was, yeah. He did so, a lot of cool so shit. So I'm basically saying, okay, this is, this is, they was looking for, um, they was looking for somebody who can write the script for whatever it is they're going to do with um me. We haven't started writing yet. Mm -hmm. When it came up to Elgin, I'm sitting there going, Okay, this dude has been in the same scene that I'm in, both of them. 
Yeah. The music scene and the political scene. On top of that, he knows somebody, he is best friends with somebody that knew this scene in New Brunswick 30 years ago. <laughs> he used to smack people around all the time too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. So I told so I told the producers, no, he has to be the one. He has to be the one. You can't touch anybody else because that's the dude that knows me inside and out. Yep. That's cool. That's awesome. So we're gonna oh. see something, we're gonna see what we can do. Oh, I, I like that story. With that. I like that's that story. Awesome. That is super cool, man. Huh. You, you know, you know a band that can provide some soundtrack music for that. Yeah, listen, you need it. <laughs> man, <laughs> I was yes. You're gonna need that Jersey feel, you know, New Brunswick. I'm feel, telling man. them, no. I, I, the one thing that I am saying to them is that music is the forefront of everything I do. Is always in the forefront. So if we're going to do something about me, you're going to have to have the music there too. That's yeah. cool. And yeah, fair enough. And hopefully they don't think that um, the music of the '90s is too much of dad music. That's, <laughs> that's true. That's <laughs> true. Okay. Okay. It is thirty years old. That's true. That's we are fucking dads. I, I'm it's not like, used oh yeah, to that. yeah, that yeah, no, true. yeah. <laughs> Man, I mean, the guitar is not supposed to be a part of the generation gap. Yeah. Right, it is kind of dad music, huh? It is right. Oh, guitar, shit. guitar music is dad music now. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Gibson yeah, yeah. filed for bankruptcy last year. Yeah, get your dad hat on. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, it's so <laughs> weird. It's so weird for us. We're like, no, no, it's not. Oh, no, we're, we're we're in total dad denial. People still care. I'm <laughs> not a dad, so I'm. <laughs> Um, but but, uh, but I am but I am the crazy uncle, so <laughs> it's kind of the same, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it was it, 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 it was crazy. Whenever um whenever we were um when we did when y'all did Stoke last year, it was so funny seeing the old crew too because we all got that gray. Um, <laughs> um the skinhead the skinheads from back in the day have long hair and neck beards. <laughs> <laughs> no, we had nothing here. A lot of beards out there these days. <laughs> but it was, oh, but not, it was here. The, I mean, not here. <laughs> not here. Well, I, I can't grow this. This is all I got. This mm. is all I got. So, all you need. <clears throat> but it was, but it was. Um, I mean, I think I'm enjoying myself now. On top of that, I. We, while I'm saying I'm enjoying myself, I'm also recognizing the fact that there is something serious that's going on that we also got to um, we also got to do something about. I mean, I spent the past 20 years just trying to put it all together, and the main reason why I'm enjoying myself now is that you know fruits of labor. You know, yeah, people yeah. are finally getting it. For a long time, the only people that really knew who I was, I mean, throughout the 2000s, were the folks that wanted to kick my ass. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I mean and finally people are just about, saying, okay. Yeah, talk about being under fire and, and really yeah. you're not reaping any glory. I mean, for for I don't even know a while. And also I really wanted to ask you, Daryl, just how you feel just even over the past few weeks, how things have sort of tipped. It's tipping point in some of in some way and how, how you felt about that. I think that it was coming I mean yeah. This was a long time coming. I, I mean, that's that goes yeah. without saying. Once again, I got to bring y'all into the mix because um, I was at a show at the Roxy with y'all. Y'all were playing when L.A. blew up in 92. That yes. day. I remember. We didn't know it yet. But yep. We didn't know it yet at the time, but we were all pissed off about the fact that they got off from yeah. even, even with the video evidence. And... And that wasn't the beginning, but that was like the biggest, the biggest flare up in our in our sort of adult lives was Rodney King. Yeah, it was the it first was, big was, one. First yeah, big one in our adult lives. It's been, even though it's been going on for four hundred years, you know what I mean? Like yeah, it's just but, starting you know, to kind of get caught on video, you know? Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that's the difference. Too. That was the difference. That was the yeah. difference. Was and the, what yeah. happened was as time, now we see it on video all the time because yeah. everybody has a camera. So, and yeah. that's why everybody's frustrated. And now we have enough evidence out there to say, you are going to change this. Yeah. We're not asking this time. Yeah. <laughs> We're really not asking. Yeah, vote for whoever you want, but you are going to change this. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's like, and I think um, people are really saying <laughs> we can't let this die this time. I mean, we flare up. I mean, that's what usually happens. We flare up, 
and then we go back on flare Everyone's up. Everyone's got that attention span, you know? Yeah. 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 I mean, that memory this, that people forget. Yeah. yeah like, this like time, things, no. Things like get out of the news for a minute, then people go back to their, their lives and don't think about shit. You know? Yeah. So that's like, what happened I, this time. Mm-hmm. Or at I least that's what, what we hope. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think what happened was Trump became president and we didn't, first of all, we thought that that was a joke when we were supposed to, um, when he was running and then it wasn't funny anymore. And yeah, then, yeah. all exactly. the stupid shit that we have it's, seen over the past four or five years. I, mean, so, yeah. I wish it, I wish it was funny, but it's the exact opposite of yeah. funny. Yeah. Like, it's just yeah. It's scary. Yeah. It's, it's mean, a fucking misery. And, and, if, you, and you wouldn't think 30 years ago that he would have been like this back then i mean it was like he i don't know what it is about us electing people that we know are laughing stocks but this is why we shouldn't do that you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah and and i hope we recover i hope we recover the way we should recover but it all yes. remains to be seen. We got to get through this first, and we got to see an end at some point. We got to see mm-hmm. it. We got to see an end game, and make sure that when we do see an end game, yeah. this never happens again. Yeah, yeah. never. Yeah. You got to. <laughs> we can only hope, man. <laughs> I, I, you got. You got to hope people enough. People are motivated enough. Hey, what's up, Ever? What's hey, up? you. Hey, Ever. What's up, buddy? How's it going? Hi. Oh, so it's just a little pre bedtime forever out there in Idaho. <laughs> yes. It's early just, out there. Yeah, what time? Because it's like it's nine thirty like, here. Yeah. So it's like six thirty there, right? Yeah, yes. It's just uh, he's just coming in to say his good nights. You got spaceships uh, hey, on, on your pajamas, ever? <laughs> Are there spaceships? You got spaceships? I don't even know. Can he? Oh, he can't yeah. hear you guys. What's up, hey, buddy? <laughs> hey, buddy. <laughs> Hey. 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 Look at that grin. Hey, there it is. on your pajamas? There it is. He's, right. like, I'm do- He's like, I'm done. Right. Yeah, those are my buds. Buds. The buds. The boys. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt, Daryl. Oh, uh, no, no, no. I think I was, I think I was pretty much um, okay. done. Um, but, yeah, it's we all- just got to make sure that this doesn't happen again. I mean, all the things that, um, you know, <clears throat> this is another reason why I was in the punk scene to begin with. I started seeing um, um, new ideas for a political mindset as well. And it was like everything that, because um, remember, I was coming out of the military when I was in the punk scene, when I, when I got it. Right, that. sure, yeah. And so I had an idea of what, um, I, I had different ideas of what life should be like. And that was why I wore that beret all the time. I d- didn't mean anything to me. I would, um, I wouldn't wear it now because it's a cop beret and doesn't work for me anymore. Um, but back then, I just thought it was a nice little thing to wear. Well, it was great that we all had the punk scene to help open our minds. I'm going to say that right now for all of us. I mean, it did that for all of us. Mm-hmm. I think it. I think it was. Um, it was a starting point of just yeah. being dissatisfied yeah. with the status quo, if if you will, or just the what yeah. we saw around us. You know, it wasn't. It wasn't like we all had a bunch of answers. We just knew. Yeah. We weren't satisfied with the way things were, yeah. and just went about creating a sort of a better world, or trying to. Yeah. And you met people all the time that like you, like you learned like new stuff from, you know, that like you didn't mm-hmm. like you didn't know about, you know, and like that would help to expand your mm-hmm. your mind as well about correct, correct. I mean, and, and fact of the matter is, we was also in a college town. Yes, we were yep. all in the college town. Yeah, yeah. We saw people that was planning on doing something sometime in the future um, that was coming up with all kinds of ideas, and um, I liked the New Brunswick scene back then. I mean, whether you were talking about folks that were straight up punks to um, folks who were in the industri- doing industrial or the folk bands or the funk bands. Yeah. yeah. And <clears throat> it, was, it was a different thing. <laughs> punk funk, you know. <laughs> New York was different, though. New York oh, yeah. was different because everybody went to New York to, um, to get their thing on. So the New York scene was just loaded with a lot of really good, good hard bands, but New Brunswick was hungry. <laughs> yeah, New Brunswick was a hungry g- crew, and we and and we kind of like it was hard for us to just leave the city because 
it costs too much to keep going into New York all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. and we just stayed here. I mean, you know, I mean, the bands that really, the, uh, the bands and musicians that really did good were the ones, I mean, really managed to go on to do something and are still doing things now are the folks that said, screw it, I'm out of here. We got, we got to, um, we got to lay our anchors somewhere else because we got to grow this band. That's what y'all did. That's what um, my boy Sharif did from SNA slash fried ice cream. You know, <clears throat> remember how New York just, nobody liked us to New York for the longest time. And we were like, <laughs> and then all of a sudden we were like, wow, people, people showed up. You know yeah. why? Yeah. Because something else we haven't talked about. Y'all did, when I say that um, y'all built, the, um, rebuilt the scene here in New Brunswick, the important thing that y'all did, the thing that was really important is that you guys had a bit of a following. You guys were um, bringing um, audiences to various clubs and to shows and stuff like that. And you would bring, and you would make sure that other bands that were trying to come up were on the bill with you so they can get an audience. That's how Lucy Brown blew up. Yeah, that's right, right. Yeah. And I mean, I was able to see a lot of good, I mean, Sticks and Stones, Sticks and Stones was really, uh, was doing their thing just before y'all came on the bill. But it was like, after after that, they got they got a little bit of juice. Um, Headstrong, which was doing, which before then were like members of Vogue, Wark and PED, um, and PED was before my time. Uh, yep. <laughs> they got a little bit of juice here and there, and then of course the sky base. I mean, y'all built that scene. Y'all gave people a reason to um to play music. Really, yeah. y'all gave y'all gave the young folks in like from like ninety. I would say up to a, that whole ten year stretch. Even after you were gone, even after y'all left the city, um. Those remnants were still here to at least about maybe two thousand, and um, I mean, granted, I was uh, that was when I left the scene as well. But you know, what's funny <laughs> is what's funny is there's probably I uh, such a small percentage of people that are watching this that even knew us at that time, Daryl. So you are like digging up some history that most it's good have <laughs> no idea about which is cool it's really cool well it's so funny because it's like i knew y'all i mean like i said i met y'all when y'all was at brooklyn i did not know the 54 welton days all right um i have the welton street trilogy in my closet right now though <laughs> welton street trilogy. You got Holy one. Shit. i still got that featuring hobbs the kitty and and pedro with a ponytail oh my god <laughs> wow What's in the World Street the, Trilogy? There's only know. like 12 copies in existence or something. <laughs> oh, my God. I wish I had one. And he's got two. <laughs> That's like uh, Clockwork Santa. So it, that I can do because my half inches, my VHS tapes don't break. Mm. I can do that. I'll help you out with that one. I'd love to see that. <clears throat> um, but it was so funny because Welton Street, all of a sudden, this was the funniest thing. Like I said, I didn't know y'all when um, when y'all was on Welton Street, but there was a whole bunch of other bands that just came out of the just came off that street. Um, yeah. Inspector Seven was doing that thing on on um, Welton Street. Yep. The Gingerbread House had Transylvia and and Inspector Seven. So it, was just, so it was like, okay, yeah. this this town is just like band central. That's right. Lifetime so, was there too. In the, in the Lifetime. That's right. Lifetime yeah. was on Welton. Yeah. Yeah. They all moved the house over there, like after we moved out. That's and the then this thing, man. It was and a cool then time. Seventy four. <laughs> yeah, the the very storied 174. Oh man, era. I'm glad I got. I'm glad I got that video. I am so glad I got Solar Palooza. Matter of fact, that some of that video Solar showed Palooza. up in the documentary. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. The outdoor shows. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, no, no, knowingly, like a lot of that stuff on the DVD. Obviously, Daryl probably shot, which of course is like. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff, Daryl. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, I, my my claim to fame. Yeah, I, I I did all the early footage. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Not all of it. Not all of it. I think great, um, Dave Urbana probably had some shots in there. I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But so, um, so. but yeah, the Solar Palooza stuff I shot a lot of the Solar Palooza stuff. And, those are great, dude. Yeah. Super Touch played one of those. I got five yes, children. Yes, I got that full set. Oh, I, I got oh, that I full set. I think that full. No, I, no, the full set isn't on um YouTube, but some of it is. 
Wow. That's and cool. um, and my uh, and one of the actors actually, um, one of the actors in the movie, um, she actually told me, "Chill on that. Don't don't do that. Just save it for something." So yeah. I said, "Okay," because yeah. um, you're just giving away like gold for free. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but, that's but, great. Hey, Look, I, I miss Super Touch. I miss all those bands from back in the day. I mean, I wish people could have um, could appreciate them as much as we did back then, but they got stuff now that they appreciate. So That's all. Just, I'm cool. I'm cool. It's always new stuff. I appreciate y'all. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Cool, man. And I still got the, and I also still have Warp Tour footage. Well, oh, from what? A lot? 2000. 2000? Yeah, of y'all. Right. That's cool. <laughs> Because I did That's that awesome. full set. Because that showed up in the DVD, too. Okay. Did we give you credit for any of that stuff? Yes, you did. You okay, did. all right. Okay. You did. You did. Oh, I'll there. Oh, really? Right. All right. I was, I was, I was looking at... You don't at, know. You, you never know with us, you know? Yeah. I was looking at Do You Remember on IMDb to see if my name showed up in the credits, but it isn't set up like that on there. So it was like, okay. But I do know I'm. Uh, but I do know y'all listed me as camera and all that. My phone number shows up on in, in the documentary. On the me. wall. Yes. On the wall. <laughs> That's right. I think I've seen oh it. You're in the photo. Real <laughs> big on the, on the wall. It says Daryl. That's right. That's right. <laughs> You're on the wall. A, call the wall. Oh yeah. no. Dude. Um, That's yes. a, oh man, such such stuff. I got a lot of um, one seven four stuff, um, and I, cool. I, to this day I've always been mad because y'all did um, the group photo in um, for the album cover. Oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah. And um, I, I knew people were on their way over there to take the picture, and I just didn't feel like it. <laughs> I, didn't feel, I didn't feel like walking. Ah, oh, boys. <laughs> I was in Somerset, and I didn't feel yeah. like walking all the way over there. Oh well. Yeah, because like. It's like everyone was like kind of hanging out there like that almost every day. Anyway, it was just yeah. another day, right? It's like yeah. now they're just taking a photo. Yeah, yeah. they'll take another one tomorrow, probably. <laughs> <laughs> the bounce, yeah. the, uh, the original, um, the uh, the original, uh, you know, marquee that you had for the first show that y'all um did, the first yeah. show that y'all ever had. That's that's that was on the wall. Oh yeah. 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 That, uh, I have, I have wrapping like, paper, right? I have like almost yeah. all of that yeah. stuff in my possession now in my basement because I kept it <laughs> when we moved out. All the my paintings and stuff that were on the wall too, from like art school. And for some reason, and y'all and and um and the Hand Industry Trilogy actually has the second show y'all ever did with Greg going up on stage wearing a Phantom of the Opera mask. Uh, Ooh, yeah. I remember yeah. that uh -oh. singing. And I dare you to do this live once. Set me free. Set me free. <laughs> Our first song. That's ever the first song. Wrote. The first song first we ever song. wrote. Yeah. Oh, uh, I was I, when I was when I was on stage with y'all last year. I was like, swear, I was I really wanted to just like throw out all these songs I wanted y'all to play. <laughs> play PMRC. <laughs> that was the one. That was, PMRC. That was, that was our first good song. One of our first good songs. <laughs> What's Relatively funny, good, not good. Maybe. What's funny is I feel like "Set Me Free" was our first song we ever wrote, and then we kind of we went downhill after "Set Me Free." wasn't that bad. Yeah, you know, like, we went downhill after that. Like "Set Me Free" was kind of okay. Went down like a but real. You know what's weird about that time? Y'all say that y'all were y'all weren't that great. Y'all y'all talking about how y'all weren't that great, but I'm sitting there looking, and I said this when I put y'all on the show. It's like every time. You guys played a gig. Your crew got larger. The fans just came out. Y'all, I'm going to get in trouble for saying this. But I said it then, and I'm going to say it now. When y'all play City Gardens, y'all brought more people than Bad Brain. Can't be. Yeah. And I'll be. It's crazy, it's crazy it's talk. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's blasphemy. <laughs> and I'm sitting there going. It's blasphemy. It's impossible. But, 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 but that's nothing, that's nothing against Bad Brains. They, it was a they strange time too. It was a strange time, and then there's obviously a huge resurgence for Bad Brains, like shortly after that. But, oh but, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Was that in Br New Brunswick? That, no, that was City Gardens in Trenton, and I remember yeah. is they had Israel singing. It was yeah. not HR. Yeah, it was, it was Israel, and they yeah. still play with Israel now. They still play with Israel every now and again. I knew Israel. <clears throat> the only time I ever saw Israel play was in his. Older band because he was um because that was when I was working up at Tower Records, and uh, 
which is a which is a television studio now. And I saw and I saw them playing over at the CB's gallery, the CBGB's gallery. Mm -hmm. He had a band with the Black Rock Coalition called No ID. And mm -hmm. I thought they were nice then, but but um but that was the only time I ever saw Israel play. I mean, so cut to two years later, um, and y'all opening up for Bad Brains featuring Israel. So yeah. Yeah. And I and I knew that you were finally on your way. By the way, when I saw when Rancid blew up, and I as um I got their album that one that has Time Bomb. Was it Time Bomb or is it um? How come the wolves? came the wolves? How came the wolves came out? And they had old flyers of theirs on um. Oh yeah. Um, and you and they sh and they said the Bouncing Souls in one of the flyers. I was like. They're coming. Uh, that was yeah. coming. <laughs> that was all right. Okay. Yeah, which, what record was that? Was that the first Rancid record, though? I think um, it was. I think it was. The three of them for pre Lars. At, at least one or two in, I think. I think it might or have let's, been. Or let, Let's Go, one of those two, I think. I don't know. No, you know, I think it was Let's Go. I don't think it was Out King of Wills. Cause, nah, yeah. Yeah, everybody's. Everybody out there is yelling at us right now. No, it was this one. It was that one. <laughs> Assholes, you <laughs> assholes. I don't even see the chat. Hold on. Let me don't even the say it. Was there imagine, a, the Let's go. Was that chat. the 10 inch? Was that the 10 inch? Let's go was the 10 inch, right? No, the one before. Oh, yeah. Was it? Jeez. I don't think we met. Whatever them. it was, it ended oh, up on yeah. MTV. Yeah. Those first two records are good, though. Adina's yeah. crying and all that stuff on the first yeah. one. Yeah. The yeah. <laughs> first Rats record is the sickest. It's real good. So good. Good but that was a, um, but that was uh, at that time because I think um, that was just before I moved out to Cleveland because by that time, I was getting um, burned out when I moved out to Cleveland. I was living um, on Sicard Street in New Brunswick, and I felt I I felt I was spinning my wheels. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, y'all was already on Commercial Avenue at this point, and. Y'all was y'all was shifting your style of y'all was shifting your style of music and all that. Um, this was just where you wait a minute. Where you went on? Um, yeah, you was you was definitely at one seventy four by then. Mm -hmm. Um, because y'all had left. Y'all had um. Yeah. Wait a minute. When did y'all move to one seventy four? Y'all must have moved from one seventy four because I was still here when y'all moved over to the florist. Hmm. I think that okay. was that was like ninety three, like when we moved over to Florist. Okay, but okay, so you went from oh wait a minute, I know what happened. No, I don't know what happened. I think y'all went from did you go from Brookline to the Florist? No, it was yes. like yeah, yes, one seventy four. Okay. Yeah, we no. went way out of town. Then we moved closer back to town. We kind of like no, 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 no. We moved from one seventy four to the Florist. Yeah, it was Brookline. Then back even the, to, like, uh, the documentary. It was Welton yeah. Street, yeah. then Brookline. Yeah, yeah, dude, it was Welton yes. Street, then Brookline. Florence was last. Then, then, then to the Florist. Oh, yeah, that's right, because you wanted to quiet Florence. things down a bit. You wanted to quiet things down a bit. After 174, we smashed the TV with the guitar in a vacuum, threw the toilet off the roof, all that yeah. shit. And we're like, let's just get an apartment. <laughs> we got to stop with this house nonsense. And we yeah, got and sure apartment. enough, they started, uh, and, um, and it's all cleaned up now. It looks great. But, uh, but they tore yeah. down the skate. They tore down the half pipe and everything. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That is fun. But uh, and right now everybody's watching that they had a half pipe. Man, that <laughs> house. I, I look at that house now when we cool. drive by, and I'm like, that house is so small. That porch is so small. It's so how did tiny. ten of us live yeah. in there? Like, and how did like you know we'd have like well over a dozen people squeeze onto that porch, you know? And it's just like, yeah, it'd be like like fifteen of us hanging out <laughs> on the porch drinking forties. Yep. I broke Lots my glasses. Walk by. <laughs> I broke my glasses there during uh, one New Year's. They yes, never smashed up because they, cause they we everybody like, piled up on each other. Yeah, there was always like, uh, a crowd surfing and all the whole thing. Yeah, had a pit. Like I remember, like, like uh, someone with, like was crowd surfing and, and they went out the window. Like it was like an AIDS movie. It was, oh, Eric, Monroe. <laughs> it was Eric Monroe. Eric <laughs> Monroe. It was Eric Monroe's feet. I'm pretty sure. Oh, that was Eric Monroe. Yeah, went uh -huh. out the window. It's like a, it's like a theme, like a scene from like Sixteen Candles. <laughs> uh, on top of people, yeah, yeah, just ca carrying people in the living room. George is like, what the hell did I have? Uh, yeah, <laughs> oh my God. yeah, 
I was at an Iron Maiden concert, probably. <laughs> <laughs> this is equally rad. <laughs> oh, it, well, well, then you'd be able to play. Um, I mean, I remember at the uh, at the Handy Street House, Handy Street House. That's the other place. That's yeah. another place. Another mm-hmm. band. Yes, yeah. headstrong. I meant to say at 174. I remember I got into Iron Maiden because I wasn't a big Iron Maiden fan, but I started gravitating towards Iron Maiden because y'all played. Um, while y'all was in the basement, y'all y'all broke into a cover of. Yeah, we, the, we, we did take a little. Your life and I will take yours trooper. too. What's that? Yeah, song? the trooper. The trooper. The trooper. The trooper. Yeah, y'all trooper. broke into that. <laughs> that was my favorite. One of our medleys you know, one of our yeah. rock medleys that we do in, the, in the middle of a song yeah and then you went from there to blue moon for some reason yeah we thought yeah. we were very clever we were, we're still <laughs> they yeah. still they still try to do that kind of shit to me at least this day. <laughs> we'll just we'll just go into this pat benatar part or whatever like what pat about? Benatar. <laughs> but what, i don't know <laughs> like, what you, like, what? yeah what did we yeah. do we, oh no i'm sorry no not pat benatar it was the eagles we went the eagles first. what are you talking about What's the funniest part? Oh, in the, the city, city, yeah. That's the you got. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Joe Walsh, yeah. In the city. Cool, yeah. Come on, the Warriors. I remember hearing y'all doing that. Shit. You're still doing that shit. That was a cool idea. The war. It was from the Warriors. That was cool. Man. In the so yeah. let's, play the, let's play the fastest song we have, and then we'll go into in the city. Eagles. Oh, well, well, well let me tell you. One of the things that they used to do, yeah. and, I got, and I got this on video, they would break, they would go into playing... Metallica, Master of Puppets, to Led Zepp. I like that. To, to, no, 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 no. It wasn't Led Zepp. It was Bad Company. Master of Puppets to Bad Company. What to, Bad Company? All right. No, we would oh, do oh, no. Into so the Wind Cries Mary. Doom, doom. Yes, yes. And that yeah. was the end of that little set. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, like, I think one of them would end with... Uh, yeah, that was uh, a good with you. Like the, the Melt with you is one of them. Remember, like we go from like oh, yeah. Iron Maiden to like to Melt with you <laughs> to the then, hum, the humming part of Melt, the breakdown of Melt with you. That was good shit, man. It was um, good to us. It was great. It was great to us. Daryl, yeah, shout out still to Rasujima to if he happens to watch this too. Rasujima, yeah, he's, Rasujima, he's in Highland yeah. Park now. He's still doing his thing. We still uh, want to talk to him. We want to talk to him too. Oh, yeah. uh, we got we got to rap to him because um. Because um, he shows he, he's more video that I shot. Now that tape that y'all used in the um, in the video in the DVD, that's one of the broken tapes. Mm. That tape oh, broke. Shit. I mean, I still have it. I'm trying. I'm gonna fix it one day. Okay. But um, but I'm glad it ended up there because y'all did a song called "Slave to Fashion" with him. Yeah. And yeah. And, and, and 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 that was my introduction to ska. All right. That's awesome, man. <laughs> it was like, Gima, it was man. actually, no, no, this is another breakdown on the part of the souls. They go from um, reggae to like the ska thing to funk. <laughs> yeah. The hardcore. Because like, they did the Funky yeah. Town riff. <laughs> Cause they did the Funky Town riff at one point in the song. It was like, <laughs> oh my lord! <laughs> they 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 do it pretty white though. We were <laughs> all we were experimenting. All, all, all Ross was Jima, he tried. All he of tried. those things are. Oh no, no, no. Yeah. Ross made Ross made them. Ross darkened them up a little bit when <laughs> oh, he got yeah, right. <laughs> well, well, <laughs> Ross Jima we put, put some work in. He put some work in, man. It took some time, but Ross helped us out a little bit. Oh, <laughs> I learned how to play like a certain kind of music for him. It was, it was, it was, it was like going to school, you know. Now, nah, because yeah. Babylon wasn't going to go up there with no bullshit. Nah, mm. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> yeah. that was not. And um, oh man, um, do you remember those shows with uh, Frank Lacey, Daryl? Frank Lacey, Frank Lacey, Frank Lacey. Remind me. He was now. A, you got to remind me. Yeah, he was a good bud of, of Ross's, and he was this, like, real sick jazz dude that we did a couple of shows with. He was, like, a, you know, accomplished oh, yeah. jazz international I do player. I remember those, but I, I never like, went to one. They hired us to be their backup band, so they had to teach us how to play. Like, you did that at the Court Tavern, didn't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I think I gave y'all was, still, y'all was at Brookline. That was the early days. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was was a cool. yeah, we were practicing in that basement. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, 
we learned so much from Frank and Ross. That's why I, I, I thought of it. Yeah. Just think about what has, I mean, just think about all the musicians that you touched that have gone on to other things. I mean, I know from Brookline, there was a more than a couple that, I mean, you had Sticks and Stones, Jack Terry Cloth, AKA Pete V as, as I known him back then. Um, you know, he's World Inferno. Yeah. Um, I remember Tori and was in a band called that um, that's practice in your basement called In a Circle yeah, with yeah, Corey yeah. Pierce from God Forbid. <laughs> yeah, and he it, played and he played the skate park the um the skating rink in um in Franklin Park when y'all had that gig down there. Yeah, in a circle. Yeah, yeah. And Quincy wasn't that Quincy was yeah. in that band too. Right? Quincy was in that band too. Yes, yeah. Quincy was in that band. Um. That's right. Quincy was, and Quincy, you know, he was trying to do everything. He was his main thing. He wanted to get. He wanted his sky band. Yeah. That was his thing. But between before he got to the sky band, he was in inner circle. Then he then he played with um. Then he played with Headstrong. We placed in their bass player, yeah. who actually yeah. just passed on a couple of years ago. Um, Ed Strong. Ed Strong's gone. Yeah, he passed really? away Rest about two or three years that. ago. Um, they did. I, I went to his funeral. They didn't even know he was in a band. Uh, they never knew he was. His family never knew he was in a band. Wow. And That's crazy. And then I told them, "Yo, look at because I have some headstrong stuff on um with him playing, um on YouTube." And they were just like, "Thank you." Wow, yeah. that's awesome. awesome. We didn't even know this side of him. I, wow. I seen. I've seen Frank Strong. I tattooed his son recently. Oh, well, not really? that recent. Well, pre-COVID, I I tattooed his son, Frank Strong's kid. Yeah. It's weird. That's some weird shit. Doctor. He's yeah. a doctor now or something. Yeah. And it's like, I remember you on st- <laughs> it's like yeah. when you see when you see them now and they're like in their professions, they're teachers, they're doctors, they're attorneys. I remember when you used to just punch people on stage. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but now it's just like it, it, stay it's in school, kids. Yeah, stay, stay in school. school. Stay, stay in school. <laughs> We don't we, we so, don't burn out in the way the, um, the older uh, musicians used to. We don't burn out like that anymore. We figure it out. Yeah, mm-hmm. so, for better than ever. But it's That's weird right. to see now that we're not burning out like that. It's weird to see where we end up after where we were thirty years ago. Yeah, you just yeah. stay on that journey. Just keep going. Mm. Yeah, but when you start when you start raising that family and you start um getting domesticated, it's just it's like I always tell people um. And to all you kids out there, your parents have something in their past before you were born that will make your jaw drop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very true. And anyway, yeah. but yeah, after Headstrong, that's when Quincy, by the way, started in the Spectre 7. Yeah. Yeah. That was yeah. that was when that began. And now the rest is history. But then now we got Hub City Stompers out of that. Yep. And um, but it's like it was um it it was it was the best of times. It was the best of times. I mean, I'm not. Even, <laughs> I remember even back then when I was shooting all the shows. Um, I would. I remember there are times when I would just look around and seeing everybody jamming, seeing everybody playing, and I said, you know, this is what we're going to call the good old days in the future. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot yeah, of good. It. Yeah, I yeah, energy in the room back then. Cool. You know, There's that's always it. Always just a just a good energy in the room and good vibes. You know. Yeah, yeah I mean back then. And I love seeing what I love seeing the fact that y'all still out there and out there where y'all belong. I mean, everybody, you know, loves y'all around the world. And I mean, y'all are considered legends. Y'all are freaking legendary. Y'all basically gave You're a legend, the Carol. You're, You're a legend. legend. Man. <laughs> You're the legend. You got Luke Cage playing. Yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. What are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, I, got Luke, I got Luke Cage. Maybe we can have somebody play y'all. Who should play no, y'all in the next I want it to be Luke Cage. Yeah. <laughs> we got the movies. Oh, my God. Bunch of legends hanging around, yakking at um, each other. Yeah, dude. Talk about a bunch of shit that nobody knows anything about. But, uh, hey, hey, George. Hey, hey, George, you're not out of that. Le- you, you got your legendary status, too, George now. The oh, actual thanks. musician. <laughs> George, <laughs> actual musician. Oh, man. Like, <laughs> like, want to tell us like about like what like what like what like what you've been doing for the past like ten years or so? Yeah, let's let's talk about you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> everybody yeah, knows yeah. about our dumb <laughs> shit. Let's talk about Daryl. That's yeah. what we want to talk about. Yeah, but you know, it's 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 crazy. I mean, I I have to just make sure that the props were put in there. 
you know. Oh, I mean, before the past, up. it's cool. Daryl, Daryl has given us a little bit of a like sort of a punk family tree straight out, like yeah. that grew out of the right. which it, I think yeah, is a true. cool it's, perspective. That I don't even we don't we're so far from that. Our vision of the bouncing souls, and like I said, most of the people that are watching this have they don't know that bouncing souls. Daryl knows that bouncing souls, yeah. like. It's when more we pieces. were figuring out who we were, like everybody else in that time, we were all trying to figure out who we were. And it's such a cool moment. And I appreciate Daryl bringing it up because yeah. there's not many people. <laughs> Daryl was paying attention to everything that was happening back then. Daryl was yeah. sober. <laughs> Daryl was sober. <laughs> yeah. That's were you the sober witness? Yeah. That's what it sober was. Witness. Yeah, yeah, I was this yeah. all day long. <laughs> oh, man. Jeez. We were all really drunk. So, this, this is, is great. great. This is great. I, I just I just love the fact that now, like when we're on tour, whenever the fuck that's gonna be, yeah. and somebody's like, "Remember that fucking time? What what was that?" Like, I'll just be like, "Call Daryl, dude. He's gonna know." Like, <laughs> you know I mean? like, just call Daryl. Great. I'm gonna get yeah. all these. I'm gonna get all these PMs. <laughs> Someone sliding in my DMs. When was the? When were they yeah. over doing this and yeah. this? It's like, oh yeah, back when that. Yeah, I know that day. I was there. Dude, I was you, you right behind them when they did it. You literally have dates and times and yeah. shit. Like, it's insane. <laughs> Amazing. Great memory. Yeah. yeah. It, it, I wish it, it, I had was, your memory. I got too many missing brain cells. <laughs> yeah. Going back hey, to look. he was sober. Yeah. But it was so funny because I wanted, even though I was involved, by the way, with all the politics and stuff over the past 20 years, and I, my thing was really I wanted to, I wanted to find something that got us back got me at least back into the scene and it has not been successful i mean it's just like it's it's been um overwhelming all the work that i've been doing over the past 20 years with a lot of help um mm -hmm. so over the past four years i've gotten that little bit of notoriety i do a documentary a a, a, a tv show that went belly up before it even got aired um and um and the movie and then all of a sudden I got the um I got a little bit of um uh, momentum. I said, okay, let's is there anything that I can do with my newfound fame, you know? Mm -hmm. Sure. And the, one, and the one thing that I want to do at some point, at some point, is figure out how to get, you know, maybe not shows because I noticed they don't do shows anymore, really, do they? I mean the mm. young folks don't do shows. No, well that well that's the thing. I, I think I wanna I wanna insert something. Am I is my internet bad right now? Can you guys hear me? Oh, uh, there's yeah, like a can, weird. I, we can hear you. Yeah, you're, you're like you're popping and locking. You're like... jiggy with it. You're like. Oh man, <laughs> I have bad internet. I'm in the mountains. It's bad up here. Um, I think I think what you're talking about with all this time, Daryl, it was like, it was a magic time. Like uh, so many things were born, and it's again, you don't want to be nostalgic in a sense, but. Uh, it's different now, right? It is. There is it is that same I mean, thing to document. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, granted, we're older. I mean, I can't move yeah, the yeah. way I used to back in the day. I learned that the hard way um, during the Dave Franklin um, concert. I mean, it's like the tribute show where I thought that I was going to be able to um, do that show and then go to the after party. And I couldn't make the after party. I was out of it. And I had been sitting down most of the show because I was out of it. Yeah. But that's just us. That's just us getting old. Mm -hmm. um, the scene is different because the way um, heads today approach the scene is different. I mean, it's not shows anymore. It's dance party in many respects. You don't see the guitars and the drums and the bass. You see the drum machine and the DJ and, and, um, and I don't, and I'm, and, and that's, and that's cool. That's yeah, cool. Yeah. I mean, that's what, that's what they want. Yeah, um, yeah. I try to warn people about EDM, however, because I try to tell them, Hey, look, back in the eighties, we thought that we was going to replace every instrument with a keyboard <laughs> and it didn't work out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, but um, but they're making it work. So I guess I so it's like okay, art. I mean, in many respects, when it comes to today's music, we're dads. It's dad music that we um, <laughs> we're, we're I get, you know, 
they got they got they got a they got a good steady stream of good hardcore shows going on in Asbury Park right now. Actually, oh, yeah. I mean, pre- COVID, of course, nothing's happening. But right. the Shore Style presents like there's been like a regular. There, there's still cool people doing live shows and people that can come to them. I see. have seen, I have seen um, bands, and it, it's like. They call them the revival circuit in many respects. They, they, I've had heard that term in regards to them. Um, basically, for the metal bands, for the new metal bands that are out there, because there's a band out of Dallas called Power Trip that knocked me for a loop one time. I went to go see them. They opened up for Obituary and Exodus about two years ago, and I loved them. And in regards to the punk scene, there's some bands out there that, um, that I like, that I think sound great, but all I'm doing, being my 51-year-old ass, is thinking about how much they sound like the Descendants or something like that. It's like, right. I can't. I should. But not as good, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, that's... I mean, because that's... I Because mean, I know that back in the day when we were making music, they was doing that shit to us, and I was just like... Right back. Here's your charger. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yep. Yeah, well, it'll always yeah. it'll always keep coming, though, man. It will yeah. always keep coming, and yeah. you know we'll always be there giving it props and saying, "Hey, you gone with your bad selves? We're here for you." Mm-hmm. But, <clears throat> but, but having said that, you like to know what kind of role, um, at least for myself, because I've always been in, the, I've always been looking out for what kind of role am I going to play. I guess this is it. I guess. I'm going to go chase after Nazis for the rest of my life, or at least until all the Nazis are gone. <laughs> I like I that. I can wait. Yeah, hey, it's awesome, know, it's, it's fighting you know. a good fight right there. I love <laughs> that you're doing it. I love that you're doing it. And I love that you're getting some props finally and yeah. some recognition for uh, some hard work. And um, yeah, it, it seems like a, a good auspicious time to be talking to you about that subject. You know, just, I feel like I, I'm eternally the optimist, but like maybe there might be some real change. Uh, um, maybe, maybe the the big ships turn slow, and maybe something's gonna happen here. I mean, I don't know. It will. <laughs> it will. I mean, to get back. I mean, I know we've been spending the past hour just reminiscing and talking about the scene from back in the day. But, but yeah, I think that um, there is gonna be some real change. I mean, because we want it. I did a video. Um, a couple of days ago in, in regards to how black people respond to um, the situations out there. We say, and I, and I said straight up, when we commit to something as black people, we will just keep going for it until we get it. <laughs> That's, That's how good. it works <laughs> with us. And and at the end of the video, I said, we just call for the defunding and or abolition of the police. No shit, right? I know, right? Now, <laughs> we're staying on that. Yeah. And, and 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 it's funny because I when um, Eric Gardner and Trayvon um, were killed and um, Sandra Bland was killed a couple of years back, that was when everybody start, t- started talking about how um, we need to abolish the police. And, and you started hearing people saying that on Fox News. So needless to say, Fox News have go, well, who will protect you? Well, you ain't doing it. So we're not we're not going to lose anything from any of this, but uh, but now it's starting to be a serious discussion. Defunding the police and defunding the police just simply simply means for a lot of folks um, finding a different way to um, approach, I guess, law enforcement or the criminal justice system or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, focusing more on um, prevention or education. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the schools need help. Um, our health needs help, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't like actually mean like get rid of the police. It just means right. the police don't need tanks. You well, know, like put that money yeah. for the tanks into education or whatever that yeah. might be. It's not like people get this weird, like, oh, defund the police or whatever. Like they think, like, get rid of the police and it'll be anarchy. It's like, that's not what people are talking about. They're just talking well, about reallocating right. money, right? Well, they're going to keep doing that because one of the things you also have to bear in mind is that you have a right wing echo chamber out there, a propaganda mill, if you will, that needs you to believe that. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. So they're going to keep on reinforcing that lie because, yep. it, because yeah. it serves them. It's yeah, just it, like them 
just yeah. like them when they try to say, well, the Democrats started the KKK or Hitler was actually a leftist. That's why he called himself a socialist. It's like, yeah. oh, come on, y'all. All you got to do is crack open the history book and know that you're full of shit. And it's not just Fox News; it's CNN as well. Like it's all of it's all it's all of them that do this shit. Like they fit, like they scare you. They try to scare yeah. you. Into, yeah. Whatever. And and that's one of the reasons why I always tell people: look, um, you could go for go for whatever it is you want on TV. You can go ahead and um and listen to all that, but remember, um, when you turn off that TV set or put down your laptop or whatever, and you go out in the real world you're going to find that it ain't playing out the way they say it is. Yeah. yeah you absolutely. know? Yes. You have to keep that grain of salt. Uh, but I think people have a hard time doing that. They, they're just like get spun by, by what's on, on the news. Yeah. And it pisses me off because you got to think about a lot of the stuff. See, here's the thing. A lot of the stuff from my vantage point mm -hmm. that I hear them talk about on the news I know they're lying about certain situations because I was in those situations. I right. was in yeah, Charlottesville. Yeah, 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 I yeah, know fair. you're full of it. Yeah. yeah, yeah um, and, and, that's, and that's where people are finding out that um, that's why people say, you know, the media lies <clears throat> and all that. And the reason why they know that is because they are in the street. They are there. They know certain yeah. things didn't happen that way. Right. But also, you weren't like in Charlottesville, just like in it, like a bystander. Like you organized stuff. You were like part of the whole. Well, like the people might not know that, but like it's not like you just like showed up. Like, yay, Nazis sucks. Like, no, you like organized the fucking thing. Oh no, but, like, yeah. You know, well, help or helped be part of it. You know. Well, my role was to cover it. My role was to um, basically videotape everything that I saw and get into a fight here and there. Um, yeah. Cause that's because that is what happened. One dude called me the N word, and I cracked us. Give him a little love tap across the back of his head, and he ran to the police. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, so it, I, so I wasn't an angel while I was in Charlottesville, but I mean, I got pepper sprayed for the first time in my life in Charlottesville. But uh, my uh, main thing was to document everything that I saw, and I had um, a crew of people that um came down with me. That was our that was our mission, and we said. A couple of days before, because um, one of my people had a podcast at the time, and we said, you know, Charlottesville, when, as it stands with the alt in regards to the alt right and the cause of the white supremacists, they was basically feeling their oats until Charlottesville, and we said before then it was going to be their ultima. Right. It was going to be, and it, and it definitely uh -huh. was. And I mean, right. it, it was ironic because um, at one point I drove up to a building, um, to an apartment building up in uh up in Charlottesville as I was trying to turn around and get out of there. And it said Altamont on top. The building was named Altamont. And I'm sitting wow. there going, That's <laughs> weird. I said, I yeah. need to go. <laughs> no, over, over like taking down what, a Civil War monument or whatever? Like, was Which will probably come down within the next yeah. couple of months. Yeah, and Either which, yeah. what's amazing about that, my, my girlfriend's Korean, like half Korean or whatever, and she's just always just like, it's a losing they lost they don't have why why the flag they lost they lost like done stop it get it over with like like because they, like teach they, it in they, teach it in school yes of course because that's part of history or whatever but like don't you don't have to commemorate it <laughs> and just, let me, you know, get yeah. lost. let me tell you something right now i have archives of like white power stuff around this office i mean matter of fact i'll, I'll show you that shield is from Charlottesville, and yes, that's a clan hood right there. <laughs> wow, that sucks. Now that is not put up there as a place of honor. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it's I'm there to it's... remind us what we're fighting. Yeah, yeah, right. And so long as you are putting things in a place of honor, it's not about history. It's right. it's about revering that yeah. thing that should yeah. not be yeah. revered. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, true. That's is, very true. Is it, is it true that the KKK is not a terrorist organization? It's true. And they Antifa know. is now, or they're is not? He, that's he's, fucked he's, up. Clown, not. clowns trying to make they them. want they want to be right. Like, right. right, they want it to be. They say that in the state. I mean, there's hate groups that are listed as terrorist organizations. Um, Antifa is that's, a belief system to be begin, begin with. Yeah, it's a belief. Not so they're not going to um, they're not going to be able to criminalize that. I mean. 
there are anti-fascist organizations and they're not terrorist groups, you know. Right. I, it's That's one of the things they have to be careful of when it comes to the right is like basically everything that they do now is rhetoric. Back in the day, um, they had a foundation. They had their politicians. They had their pundits. They had their philosophers. And when I say back in the day, I'm talking, I'm just talking about the 90s and the 80s. Yeah, Reagan yeah, was the yeah. last chance that they had yeah, yeah, um, yeah. to basically um, form, um, form what they wanted for the next 30 years. But Reagan is gone now. And the idea that they actually had to work for something is gone. Um, so now, and in its place are us, are people who said we want something different in this society. And we're getting into positions where we can make those things happen. That's where all of these guys that we're dealing with now who are basically Trump supporters or Tea Partiers or whatever are freaking out. When Obama became president, only thing they saw was we just let a black man become president when none of our forefathers ever let that happen before. And then like he got real. And then it got real. Yeah. <laughs> then it got reelected, you said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then he got and even more mad. But it yeah. did. But it did get real after that. Then they realized we fucked up, and we got and, and we got to do something. That's how come you hear them now talking about civil war. That's how come they always. Huh? And, and, and go on. I'm sorry. No, I was gonna say, and I know it's pissing them off that uh, what they wanted to do a month ago or back in January when they ran out there with their guns and talking about we are going to storm the white storm the um state house. This is us. We're going to start the next revolution. You know they're pissed when we're doing it out there right now. Yeah, you yeah. know that they are pissed off that that fight that they wanted to have is actually us engaging in that fight and doing some shit. Mm -hmm. It's good to see too. It's good. It's yeah. the, back to those protests that are happening. Like. Mm -hmm. It's just great that it's just whites next to blacks, next to every color, people yeah. together, showing yeah. some unity. And, the, you know, everybody watch that <clears throat> fucking video, dude. Like, what are you going to tell anybody that saw that video? How are you going to choose bad. a side? Yeah, choose a side. What it, side it, are you yeah. going to be? There's no that became, what, to me, that became choose a side. Like, like, you know, get out and fucking yeah. protest. And, and. Like, beyond that and keep the work up all it's like yeah it's not it's not black people's job it's white people's fucking job to get out mm -hmm. and do some work that's why you, you know? have so yeah. many that's why you have so many white people out there saying black lives matter they did it yeah. in charlottesville they're doing it now yeah so many white yeah. people saying black yeah. lives yeah. matter but can yeah. you imagine do you really this was this the george floyd thing really was the last straw for a lot of folks because oh can God. you imagine what um being on that scene 17-year-old girl was videotaping the whole thing. That was who did the camera. That was who yeah. did the video. But you hear in the background people just telling the police, you're killing him. Stop yeah. it. Yeah. Get your knee off his neck. And that's all they could do. And people are giving right. the 17-year-old shit for not stepping in and doing something about it. Rather yeah, but other people are giving 17? those people. Yeah, other people are telling all those other folks to knock it the hell off. Yeah, yeah, I know. I mean, but... everybody was sitting there talking about how of why couldn't you just bum rush the cops and get them to stop? Because you, you will be shot. You yeah, will you be can't dead. Do that. And you can you <laughs> and that was what made everybody freak out. Also about they, we have seen videos of people getting shot by the cops before with crowds around. But that was instant. That was immediate. You saw that. It was a shock to the system. They watched the people who were there at the scene at the time had to watch them kill a man slowly, and there was nothing they could do about it. How do you live with that? Yeah, no, I can't. I can't. How do you live? With I, that? I, I, I'm yeah. really, unco I'm really uncomfortable about that. Like that sucks. But you can't over, judge those people either. Over, like, oh, oh, right? over fucking like, tw over twenty bucks. Yeah. Over twenty bucks. Oh, over it's insane. Fuck yeah. you. It's like, how yeah. how does that not piss you off? Yeah. It, it it pissed everybody off, but I think yeah. that it was it was really like it was really like we got to blow this up. Yeah. We have got to end this once and for all. And then after Minneapolis blew up, then came the folks in other towns said, "You know what? <laughs> we got to revisit some shit here." And then those towns blew up. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So. But it, it it was um. But I think we're um. And, and I'll tell you this right now, Floyd died 
Floyd was murdered on the 25th of May, on Memorial Day weekend. This is how we're starting the summer. Mm. Uh, yeah. So brace yourself for a very long summer because this is not, I can't wait to see what happens during the conventions, the Republican and Democratic conventions. Well, crazy. Tr- well, well, Trump's Trump's doing his rally on the 19th, right? That's what, what is uh, I'm curious as to what will happen that day. You know, what's like, up with that, dude? Texas, what's up with like, I, I, and, and listen, I'm going to be fair. I'm going to be fair and say, I don't think they realized what day that was and what, and the significance of that town. I'll That's be some fucked up. You know, shit. Let's just give well, them the benefit well, of the doubt well, there. Well, you don't what? think one fucking Oklahoma person, Juneteenth? Like you don't think one fucking person in that White House knew that? That's, like, that's a strategic move. That group. White House is come up to hell. That, 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 that White House is up to hell. That's a full powder keg. They know they, now, and they're not changing it. So there's yeah. there's the problem we have. That's it's just nasty. I, that's just like I think I think it's even more. I think he's behind in the polls, and he knows who the fuck's gonna vote for him. And he's there's that. I mean, I can't. Doing it. I mean, like, I this is this is my like <laughs> like half court shot. You know, like well, I'm like, gonna tell you this right now. Yeah, race war. Not, good idea. I think that's oh, one of the terrible, reasons why bro. he moved the um the Republican convention to Jacksonville, Florida. Oh, easy. I know. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, let me give you an idea. Florida, how man. Bad I'm in Florida. I'm in Florida. Florida, man. <laughs> but I'm in Gainesville. That's, you know, we're pretty blue over here. Not that, that matters, but like. <laughs> it's not blue. It's the Atlanta of Florida. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like, the, we're like the Athens of, you know, whatever. The Athens of Florida. Yeah, yeah we're like, you know, we got some but cool it's funny music. Because it's Athens. Austin. It's the Austin of Florida. Right. Progressive mayor. It's great, man. I actually <laughs> know my mayor. I was in a band with him. He played fucking cello. That's Great. funny, <laughs> but it's crazy because Jacksonville, they was um, uh, about, a couple, about a decade or so ago, they was going to do a show for One People's Project, my, uh, my organization. Um, the Nazis did not like that. Yeah, they yeah. Shot, It was at a place called The Imperial. And be, the night before the show was supposed to happen, it was going to have a whole bunch of bands and they shot the windows out. Wow. So they canceled the show. Wow. That's Jacksonville. That's Jacksonville. Mm. And they're going to have the Republican convention at this thing, at, at this place. So it's like, I mean, there's that's a lot a, of good things going place. on in Jacksonville, but that wasn't one of them. No. Yeah. So I'm going to be down there because it's going to be, because when I was in Cleveland for the Republican convention, there wasn't a lot of us out um, when Trump became, um, Trump became the nominee. So um, I went over to um, just basically see what I could see. And the Nazis had the run of the place. Oh, wow. I mean, the Nazis, I mean, you see video of me arguing with Richard Spencer right there on the street. Yeah. Um, and then I would go from Richard Spencer to another Nazi to hassle. And then another Nazi to hassle. Alex Jones was out there getting his behind kicked by IWW. <laughs> And he gets chased down the street. I go following after everybody, and then I run into a guy named James O'Keefe, and then I call. And he's he's a um, propagandist from New Brunswick. He went to Rutgers, but he's well known. And then I had to cause him some grief because he was causing me some grief one time. Uh, it was just like Jacksonville was wow. be Charlotte and Jacksonville. Charlotte, North Carolina, was the original spot, but. <sighs> Yeah, yeah, it's fuck. Well, yeah, yeah, it's fucked it's up. It's gonna be a long summer, it's gonna and be that's long August. Summer. And that's August. and if Trump loses, do you think he's just gonna walk out of the White House and just and just what? you know what, what I mean? Like Trump is going to do. He's gonna say if he loses, he's gonna say the vote was rigged. Yeah, of course. He's gonna say that. He's gonna get all his sickle fans um around uh, around that around that idea. He's still gonna leave. He's, He's gonna have gonna to. Be, I bet you he will not be there when the inauguration happens. Yeah. And then it's all gonna be Trump twenty twenty four. He's gonna uh, try to get uh, that. I know, and but then he'll be like eighty something, right? Okay. <laughs> How old? Like he'll be kind of almost dead. Well, he probably uh, might die in between then and but now. There's so. there's a ju- there's a junior in there somewhere that likes to. He kill, wants to run kill, for mayor of New York. Get the fuck like, out. Like of like to like to kill sheep or whatever the rare thing he just blew up for no reason any, any rare thing you can find okay <laughs> like what is it yeah so yeah. so trump is trump is going to try to make the most out of his uh out of his newfound fame as president after he leaves he's going to have rallies 
all the time talking about how this would happen if I was president and all this crap. Trump 2024. Mm. Um, meanwhile, I'll be sitting there wondering why isn't this guy indicted yet? Because there's a whole yeah. bunch of things. There's a whole bunch of things. Um, yeah. Uh, state attorneys that are saying once he's um, once he's out of the White House, you should be able. Um, we should be indicting him and sending him to prison for all yeah. the stuff that he's done. That's what. But Kim I Andrew bet you they're not going to do that. That's what my girlfriend. Yeah, they won't. There's no way. The, but my they girlfriend can. They just won't. They, they won't. And that's going to piss people off too. I mean, yeah. I'll tell you flat out. I say, look, don't think that when Trump is gone, it's all over. You don't have to do any more work because you made that mistake by not dealing with this yeah. crowd. Before Trump got elected, don't make, don't go back to making that mistake. Yeah. And if Trump is supposed to be indicted for something, if he's been breaking laws, and he has, um, yeah. I don't want to hear anybody talking about now. It's time for our nation to heal. It's time to move on. I mean, that's all. That's all. It's gonna. It's gonna be four years of Joe Biden if he, if he loses, and then who's coming next? You know, like it's like Biden, a pendulum, dude. B- it's Biden, it, Biden ain't taking eight years. Like, yeah. you know. You know well, you know, and I'm not like a full on like I'm Democrat only, blah blah blah. Like right now, I'm fucking Democrat to the motherfucking shit. But you know, I am whatever it takes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, whatever, yeah. whatever the That's Nazi. What I'm at. Just That's get where the, I'm at. I am whatever it yeah. takes. It's, it's just simple. been back and forth. It's like pretty since, simple. Since the '60s, you know, just this way and then that way, this way yeah. and then that way. You know, it's never yeah. stopped. No, yeah. and, and, and I everything's think like a reaction. Really- yeah, I think that's one of the reasons why everybody's pissed off today. That's one of the reasons why everybody's out in the street. They want to, I mean, the line that I've been saying right now is that they don't like Trump. They don't like Biden. They don't know what to do. Let's blow up the cities. <laughs> let's blow up yeah. Let's blow up America right now. Yeah. Um, yeah, the election, we can't wait till November to end this shit. This is the election right now. Yeah, yeah. 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 I've been telling people, this yeah. is the election. I mean, you see what they're doing in Seattle. I mean, the whole autonomous region. I'm like, wow, you guys took over a police station? Yeah, really? that's insane. That's fucking that's insane. Yeah, that's fucking insane, actually. Yeah, there's boards and shit, like like wood up on the on the windows. And like, <laughs> they just, like, gave up, like, yeah, we're not, yeah. I'm not they getting just came up with that. Occupy. <laughs> that's insane. I'm just waiting yeah. to see if it happens somewhere in another town, and I'm going to be like, Okay, I guess this is what we're doing now. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'm not, I'm not totally against the. I got friends that are police officers, whatever. I'm not totally against them, but like at the same time, I'm again, like it needs shit needs to change. Like, yeah, I mean, I it's, it's from the so top much, down. You know, I think the criteria need, like, you know, maybe pay them a little more and then give them more psych evaluations. You know, well, like, like, like teacher, like, like, yeah. like mm. teachers. You know, like you don't pay them enough, so of course you're not gonna have the best fucking teachers. Just pay them a little extra. And but like cycle evaluate them or whatever like I don't I don't know if that's the answer but like don't just let Jim Bob fucking come and you know give him the fight 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 his grandfather or yeah. and also watch who's training them yeah, yeah all that all that watch who's training them they got this guy and I've been busting his chops on the, um on my website for the past day or so and I totally forgot his name um but. He was on John. He was in John Oliver's um, video about how bad the police are on on his latest um, TV episode, his show on HBO. And um, this is the guy who invented something called killology. And basically, he trains police and tells them that they should look upon look at themselves as predators. They are. They are hunters and they are predators and all that. And they should not be, um, they should not be afraid to kill. A matter of fact, they should be invigorated by, um, by killing somebody. In fact, they should um, look at killing um, as being a way to spice up your sex life. I'm not well, kidding. Uh, what this guy? Uh, this is the guy uh, who trains police officers regularly. That's this is frightening. And this guy trained police officers that, um, at least one police officer, that killed Philando Castile. Wow. It says, you should not be able to, you should not hesitate in killing. You should not feel you need to hesitate. Um, They should be fearing you and all that nonsense. And it's like, you need to stop doing seminars. Oh, hi, you're back. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Back and he's ready to party. Who's here? 
Do you want a drink? Hey, how you doing? <laughs> oh, that's frightening. But that's, that's crazy. But man. that's the kind of people that are training. That. So, I mean, they need to be, I mean, even before the cops, maybe they should be abolished. Maybe the biggest problem are the people who, who teach them, are yeah. supporting cops to be our shock troops, to be their yeah. shock troops, I should say. Yeah. Maybe they they're become, the biggest problem. They yeah. become that way f somehow, right? It's like, for sure, yeah. Yeah, so start there. I mean, when Amadou Diallo was killed back in uh, 99, one of the things that everybody did was, yeah. <laughs> one, of the, one of the things that, uh-oh, he, he, he's caught up in something. It's the Spanish one. There it is. There it is. You found it. You found a book he's been looking for for a long time. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Yahtzee. But anyway, um, when Amadou Diallo was killed, everybody, they didn't zero in on the police. They zeroed in on, um, on the local government in New York City, which was Giuliani. Mm -hmm. And the climate that he created. And that was what changed a lot of stuff, unfortunately, briefly. So, yeah. That's yeah, I think it's. Going. I think you got to look higher up. It's. It's. Yeah, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, the system yeah. itself it's that we are in and yeah. we're part of is is way deeper than just the police. I mean, it runs so much deeper. It it, it really is because like the police are like do like it's uh, that's a scary fucking job. Yeah, those you are know, everyday. Like, a lot you know of. Them, I mean, it's well, not. Yeah, a, like, it's cops not aren't a job all bad. I would do. You know? No, yeah. fuck the job I've done. Not about demonizing every cop. No, no, there are a lot of no, a lot of great people. It's uh there's yeah. something more, way more diabolical and way yeah. more, way yes. higher up. It's way I got, deeper, yeah. I got, I got a lot of cop friends actually. Like, yeah, there's, I know fine. a lot of, I know a lot of great cops too. So yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it's a long story, but when I was in the air force, that was my job. I was a law enforcement specialist. I was a cop. Yeah. And I got kicked out. It wasn't for me, you know. And mm -hmm. I, and I, and it showed in my um work. I did not belong in that element. Um. I should have respected the fact that I was in that element and did a better job, to be honest with you. I mean, because people were depending on me, but hey, that is what it was. I mean, I, it, and now, and immediately after I got out of the Air Force, um, I went right into the music scene. So, but the thing is, um, have, I, I, having understanding, having, having an understanding about what the uh, police go through does not negate the fact that they are putting people through even worse. They're killing folks. Absolutely. I mean, you yeah, can sit yeah, there and yeah. talk about, yeah, where they were criminals. No, Breonna Taylor was asleep in her bed when you Yeah, that's out. some very yeah, fucked up yeah. shit. I mean, and you know, what's a criminal? Like $20 counterfeit bill is a, that's a exactly. criminal? Exactly. Is that but a real, is that a criminal? Like, really? Selling really loose cigarettes. How is, yeah, selling loose cigarette. Like, yeah, it's none of that stuff. No, yeah, obviously, oh, I think oh. everyone agrees on that. And let us not forget the fact that we're not just dealing with police officers um, killing folks. Now we got these vigilantes running around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Trayvon Martin. I mean, also yeah. now you guys can take it upon yourself. Yeah, yeah. You got your Zimmerman motherfucker. Mm -hmm. yeah. Back in '94, I got yeah. I got caught up in something like that when the, um, when the cops arrested when the cops arrested me for. And this was their words, chasing a white woman through the neighborhood of Kingsburg, New Jersey. <laughs> I'm sure you were. <laughs> <laughs> that was such a stupid... <sighs> Never mind. Uh, um, I wrote a column about it. It was my first column. And, um, and I wrote that, can you imagine um, if somebody was armed in the neighborhood and felt the need to defend themselves? Yeah, yeah. I wrote there's... that... A month before Ahmed Arbery was born. Wow. wow. Yeah. Some per there's some perspective. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. See the see the white the white privilege that the four of us have is amazing. I'm not gonna deny it. Like, yeah, good for us. Like, it's, it's some lucky, good shit. Yeah. It's, some, it's all right. It's all right. You know, like, yeah, I'll take I'll ride this white thing out. It's male white. <laughs> it's fine. But like at the same time, like, hey, you, you went through that. I've never gone through that. Like. Yeah, and and everyone that like any most black people go through that fear. It's insane that anyone it's can insane. deny that. that I anyone can deny that is like I've been pulled, no white privilege. I've been pulled over before, and I'd be like, "Yeah, sir, I'm sorry." Like you know, like it's like I'm saying this on 
the internet at some point and now I'm going to get pulled over for it, but whatever. <laughs> but like, but like, I've never been scared for my life. Yeah. You know, like we can't I know. Have, I, don't, I don't have to. I'm white. Possible. I'm a white well, male. <laughs> like, I think that's a, I think that's part of what the white privilege is. That's that definitely you don't, you know, what, that's, that's the everyday part. That's, that's the everyday no, that's part. Not, that's, and let me finish. Let me finish. You sorry. don't know. You're not, these people aren't aware that, that their life's even different for someone who, of co- per, a person. Yeah, of yeah, yeah. yeah. That's par- part of the problem. Like there's so, so, you know, like, one track minded that they can't even see past uh, themselves. So that's, but, that's part of the problem. Like uncle yeah. Daryl, every yeah. single one of his fucking relatives has to understand that. Like, like yeah. Brian's kid is going to have to understand that. You know, like at some point, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, well, my it's nephew insane. wants to be a cop. My nephew wants to be a cop. And he wants to, he's a Marine now. He wants to be a cop. And I'm just like, I'm worried. I'm worried. I'm wor- um, Maybe it'll be. Because here's the fun part. When I was in, I was not a good person. When I, when I, had, when I played that role, I didn't like me. I, mean, I, will, I don't like me now. I mean, you know, when I look back and this is, no, I mean, so I, I hope that if he is going to take on that job, I, w- I hope I'm able to guide him and make sure that he keeps his sensibilities about himself because he's going to need to. And the only thing that I can think of to um, to make sure that he keeps his head about himself if he's going to do that job is to make sure that we continue doing what we're doing now. I mean, when it comes to defunding the police or changing the structure of law enforcement, so to speak, I mean, hopefully that will help to, um, to the point that people will keep their heads about themselves. But it yeah, remains- I think, we I think that goes for um, like military and the police. Essentially, military there's a system, there's a system that's, that's holding all this up. But those are individuals that are putting this action into the world and they're doing the damage they have the, that choice like you know so they essentially have a lot of power to change the system the police and the military they don't have to listen to the politicians or not listen to but they don't have to make those choices and they have really have so much more power than i think you know than they're aware of or that they could change things but and that's one of the things yeah, I'm sorry. Someone's getting ready to say something. I'm sorry. No, I was actually I was going to say something. So, so you're yeah. saying like you didn't like yourself when you were essentially a police in the military, right? Well, basically, when I look at how I conducted myself when I was in um when I when I was in the military when I was a police officer, um, what I saw was somebody. When I look back at it, I should say, I see somebody who thought that. It was great having the power to destroy a life. You do, you know? th- do, you, do you think it's because it, it's a scary position to be in, and so you have to be bigger than who you are, like who you are? Or, I, I don't know. Like, no, I got power hungry. I power got power. Hungry. So in- instantly, I, mean, I didn't have a lot of power to begin with, but you yeah. just. But when you have the ability to, it, it's. It, I mean, I was eighteen. Yeah, yeah. So you talk about it, oh, it's. It's yeah. like crashing bugs. To, it was yeah. like. Oh, yeah, I got yeah. a drunk driver. Let's see how much how much of his life he can fuck up with that. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Like, but not not yeah not consciously saying it, but subconsciously like yeah yeah. Right. It's not like right. it's not like oh a drunk driver I'm a fuck him up but like you, you yeah. Know. This is gonna be fun. Yeah. yeah. It's like yeah that and, sucks. And I look back and say, no I don't I don't want to do that. And you think about it even now you think about it even now where I go out and just try to ruin the lives of right-wingers and Nazis and stuff like that. The reason why it's fun now is because those motherfuckers deserved it. Yeah, they yeah, deserve yeah. it. But... They, but they lost, they lost the a, war in 45, like... <laughs> you know, like and in the 60s. But yeah. the reason why there's a movie out called Skin is because I also recognize their humanity. And my mission in life sometimes is to help them to recognize their humanity. Which means... Yeah. I'm that asshole yeah. that I was when I was in the Air Force. Yeah, yeah. people ch- people can change, actually. Right. I mean, that, 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 and that's important. We yeah, all and change. If, we, if there's a way to humanize these these professions, the cops and the military, that would be a big solution. If it can be not like training these people to be killers, you know, 
training them to be hum, human beings. I'm going to get that scumbag's name. Yeah. I'm going to get that scumbag's yeah. name because I got to I got to remember because he's going to have a seminar <clears throat> um, a conference in October somewhere in Vermont and people are trying to shut it down in the wake of everything that's going on right now. So it's like so it's like yeah, I I'm I'm down with that and I put it up on our website on uh, oh yeah. I have any, all this talking and I still haven't his name is Lieutenant Colonel Dan Grossman. And if you watch it and if you listen to a um and this guy basically trains cops to kill. Lieutenant his, Dan. Lieutenant <laughs> Dan. Yes, oh, Lieutenant God. Colonel Dan. Oh, the souls are on a hit list. I'm in hot water oh. music, not the bouncing souls, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Is it could be hits hits coming our way? Yeah, we'll make it friends here. Oh, make it. <laughs> oh, great. So now Fox News can complain about about the bouncing souls and shit. But you do have friends in uh, you be do cool have that. friends on the edit. I'd be alright with it. Yeah, so. I'd be okay with it. We can get banned from Rutgers again, you guys. Yeah. I'm be right back. I'm gonna be right back. My, my bladder bring it full is not circle. as young as it used to be. I'll be right back. Actually, we've been, been, been at it for days. about 90 minutes. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. we're good, right? Yeah. yeah. We should probably wrap this Thanks. up, man. Thanks so much, Daryl. This is but such a treat just to hang out with you. But then yeah, beyond man. that, I'm so appreciative to for us, you to just. Yeah, it's really nice to catch up. Allow us, allow us to, you know, be a platform to just inform more people about your experience, which is a a very rare experience and uh, i really appreciate it daryl thank you so much and yeah, same here man. man i really do appreciate talking with y'all because it really um i really wanted to do this particular one because it got a chance for me to get back to where we all were at one time you know i mean sometimes you need that yeah um whenever i go out whenever i go out and speak i always try to end it with reminding people that no matter how much you fight Remember to enjoy the things that you're fighting for. Y'all not robots. When you go out there and you're um, trying to make sure that life is good, you're trying to make sure that your life is good, and you got to remember to appreciate that life. So uh, that's what we did today. That's what we did today. We spent much of the first hour, what was much of the hour, um, talking about our lives and how we yeah, were some good, some good times yeah Part of shit. and yeah. then we got into why um the things that we have to fight we've already talked about why we were fighting and now and now the work begins seriously now the yep. work begins so thank thanks, you thanks al <laughs> thank you man so it's good, good it's good to out. listen to you man it's good to listen to you and it's good to see you again daryl yeah it's good thank to see you man it's good like we'll education for everybody too yeah well, well yes, yeah. let's get, yes. get out to a show again soon, hopefully. Fuck. Next year, I guess. Yeah. And if, <laughs> if we don't uh, if we don't see it see you in person, like maybe we'll do this again in six months or next year or something. That would be, be I would here. love that if, I we, hope. if we do it again. <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's hope we're all here. I want to see George play again. Jeez, man. Let me just tell you for the record. <laughs> I'm standing there behind you during Stokes, man, just seeing you hammer those kit, that kit. I was oh, like, thanks, this, I love this motherfucker. Yeah. Oh, thank, you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. I Yo, do appreciate that. Great. I, I was great. like, man, yes, indeedy. Man, thank mm -hmm. you so much, Daryl. That's That means a lot. <laughs> Not a problem, man. So, yeah, we'll see each other again. Yeah, soon, man. yeah absolutely. We will, definitely. Yeah. And uh, and thanks, I said thanks to Brian who oh, called oh, Daryl oh. and had thought thought yeah. of doing this. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. Thanks, yeah, that was man. Very before good. I throw, Idea, before man. I forget, I got a, I, I got a plug. I got I got to say, if anybody's trying to find out where I'm at, I'm at onepeoplesproject.com or idavox.com, i-d-a-v-o-x.com. Um, on Twitter and Instagram, I'm D Lamont Jenkins. Um, and yeah. on, um, and of course you can see the movies all right. Age of Rage on Netflix, Skin on Amazon Prime, uh, and my, on, on Facebook, I'm Daryl Lamont Jenkins. No Esquire. No, no Esquire. No, no Esquire. <laughs> I went beyond, I, I'm beyond Esquire now. All right. You are beyond that. <laughs> You're way beyond Esquire, man. Forget that shit. Um, yep, yep. yeah, check everybody, check, check out, um, uh, check out. Daryl's all everything Daryl does, everybody. I just I wanted to give him one extra shout out today. Check it out, man. He's doing some great work. Yep.
Yeah. Thanks, Thanks Daryl. Take care. Thank you. Thank you so Thanks, much. Thanks, Daryl. Better, brother. See you out there, Daryl. Peace. Thanks.